Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Bill Chasing the Movies, and I have six movies to review for you this week. And the first one is from my main man, producer, director, Judd Apatow. And while Apatow has been a driving force behind many movies, this is only his third shot at directing. Of course, his first two films as director were The 40-Year-Old Version and Knocked Up, both of which made my top ten list for the years they were released. Films he's produced, such as Superbad, Pineapple Express, and Forgetting Sarah Marshall, were also favorites of mine. However, his association with the film Year One earlier this year was a miss earlier this summer, I should say, was a misstep, but knowing funny people was around the corner, I was in eager anticipation. Apatow specializes in making movies that combine heart and hilarity, and this is no different, but the hilarity is a little more thinner, in a sense where the laugh out loud moments are still there, and they are still all through the movie, but it's in a way presented with a very serious tone to it that tells a story that's very different from any other Apatow film, but still, the similarities are there. And I sent a recent email to a friend of mine that the previous generations of actors should start reinventing themselves, taking on different roles, and looking for new challenges, teaming up with hot new directors and producers of Hollywood. Adam Sandler, whose career is still solid, didn't want to risk going into a tailspin, so he teamed with Judd Apatow. At least that's how I see it. I've watched Sandler evolve as a funny guy in the middle of the total pole Saturday Night Live to bonafide all the way to box office king. He started with goofball comedies that are just off-the-wall humor, which didn't have much in terms of substance or story, but were just plain laugh-out-loud funny. Sandler, however, took an interesting turn with The Wedding Singer, showing a more heartful, subtle side to his comedic brilliance, and then scored his first $100 million hit with The Waterboy. As time went on, Sandler would bounce back and forth. Sometimes he'd do outrageous slapstick humor with obnoxious characters, and sometimes he'd have characters with heart, but sometimes he'd play obnoxious characters with heart. And that takes a really special, talented comedian to do that, because usually most obnoxious characters just completely fail and are completely annoying. Thankfully, Sandler has succeeded in creating that type of comedy, and which is why he's been a box office king for many years now. I, myself, am a big Adam Sandler fan. Now, Sandler did, however, gain the respect of many film critics for some of his serious work, especially playing the socially awkward oddball Barry Egan in the P.T. Anderson film Punch Drunk Love. In my opinion, that was an Oscar-worthy performance, and he shot critics everywhere. And it showed a new side of him as an actor, and he took on a, a couple more serious roles, which he got some acclaim for. Sandler has shown he can act, but his most recent films, You Don't Mess With The Zohan and The Family Flick Bedtime Stories, did well in the box office and were good enough for what they were, but didn't really have the magic that Sandler brought to his characters. So, thankfully, this one pretty much revived him and showed that he does still have that talent. Now... Enter Seth Rogen, the new comedic kid on the block, whose relationship with Apatow dates back to the short-lived yet critically acclaimed TV shows Undeclared and Freaks and Geeks. Rogen hit a big and hilarious support, a supporting role in 40-Year-Old Virgin, and followed that up with a brilliant starring turn in Knocked Up, and had funny roles in Superbad, and, of course, another starring turn in Pineapple Express. All really good films. But is funny people a passing of the torch? I really don't think so. I just think it's two generations of comedy teaming up. Now, Funny People is the story of George Simmons, played by Sandler, a popular comedian who has done many hit films and has just found out he is dying and is now going back to his stand-up roots. Seth Rogen is Ira Wright, a struggling comedian living with two roommates, one of whom is doing well for himself in a lame school sitcom, and the other who seems to be on the rise in terms of his stand-up routines. The two now, Ira and George, meet at a, incidentally at an improv club, and despite many of Ira's friends and companions thinking he's not that funny, George Simmons sees something in this young man and wants him to write jokes for him. The two strike an odd yet real camaraderie, understanding one another bit by bit. But George is not the nicest guy, and that's not to say he's a heartless jerk either or, or anything like that. He just has many demons he hasn't beat yet, and the fact he's dying is, of course, getting to him mentally. And, of course, it brings to the surface the one that got away. And her name is Laura, and she is brilliantly played by the always lovable, energetic, and just awesome Leslie Mann. And we can still tell she's in love with George despite their past, but now has a family of her own and loves her husband despite his shortcomings as well. The, this film doesn't just focus on Sandler's character of George Simmons, but also equally Rogan's of Ira Wright. He too is very intriguing. He's funny yet somewhat awkward, but seemingly lacks confidence due to his two friends having more success than he has. He sees this as an opportunity, as, as not only a ticket, but a way to try and help a man who is starting to lose himself. Plain, plain and simple, Ira is a nice guy. George's side of the friendship, however, is reluctant. We know he likes Ira, and know he sees him as a friend, but his insecurity has put him in a place where he can't let him outright know that. And now, what is this movie exactly? A comedy? Yes, it is. But it's not the typical crazy, zany humor that we're used to seeing from Sandler or even at times Rogan. 
It reminds me of the style that James L. Brooks has perfected with films such as Terms of Endearment or As Good As It Gets, mixing laugh-out-loud humor with subtle, dramatic moments. And believe me, this film is funny. It's funnier than any so-called slapstick films that are a dime a dozen that we see every week. And it tells the story from the human heart of these characters. This movie is nearly perfect in every way. The dramatic moments are effective, the comedic ones are hilarious, and I care about every single character in this film and was interested in what they had to say. It told the story of how life can be funny, but sometimes we can use laughter as a mask to hide what's really going on, and how we use it in the moments to break out the awkwardness and uneasiness that may be going on in certain situations or in the minds of these characters. Adam Sandler is unbelievably brilliant here. It is his best performance since Punch Drunk Love, and I boldly say the greatest acting performance of his entire career. Adam Sandler shows his true talents as an actor, and in my opinion, this role should do for him what The Truman Show did for Jim Carrey, what Lost in Translation did for Bill Murray, and what Big did for Tom Hanks. Took a known, funny, comedic actor and transformed him into something completely different, showing a new side to him, yet also having that same thing that made him lovable in the first place. Now... His performance as George Simmons hits the right tone of hilarity, depression, sadness, anger, volatility, hostility, and sometimes downright nastiness at the exact right points. His complexities and dynamic only make him more human, even if he isn't always the nicest person. Sandler captures this role in a bottle and doesn't let up for a second, and I wouldn't mind giving Sandler, yes, you heard me right, you're going to hear me right, an Oscar nomination. You heard me right. Again, Oscar nomination. I think he is worthy of it. Rogan, however, also scores the best performance of his young career, and it makes me eagerly await what the 27-year-old actor has around the corner. With, it, with this film, in my opinion, he's avoided typecasting with a really emotional yet properly toned performance in this film, which could have been, been dropped easily. The supporting crew is right on the money. I've loved Leslie Manson's Cable Guy, and I'm glad to see she's acting a lot more these days. Jason Schwartzman has been great in the Wes Anderson films, and Apatow favorite Jonah Hill is also very effective and very funny in their supporting roles as Rogan's roommates. They deliver, they deliver interesting friendship scenes with his character, and they also take part in many satirical scenes involving lame primetime sitcoms, which we know all too well. I also liked Aubrey Plaza as a young female comedian who is the object of, the, of Ira's interest, and their scenes together are filled with awkward subtlety and softness, but sweet nonetheless. Eric Bana gives a surprising term as a seemingly dim-witted, well, I shouldn't say dim-witted, but clueless and seemingly nice on the surface husband of Laura. Clark is his name, and he gives a crazy performance and completely... Just goes the other way of uh, his normal abilities and made his character the complete opposite of what movie cliches are. Rather than being a slimy, hateful, and mean person on the surface who does bad things, he's just a guy who seems nice on the surface and does bad things. He's no monster. And, he draws, and you know, again, this makes me think of the character in Wedding Crashers, the boyfriend, the one who's with Rachel McAdams, who was a jerk 24 7. It made you wonder why her character was with him. I could see why a character as nice as Leslie Mann's Laura is with him. And in my opinion, she is the most complex character in this film, perhaps. But caught between a big rock and a hard place, caught between her past and her present. Bod and Iris Apatow are fantastic as Clark and Laura's kids, continuing with the fun that they had knocked up. And much like Mike Tyson in The Hangover, there are some fantastically effective cameos here that provide the scenes they're in with something we can enjoy. My personal favorites were with Eminem, Ray Romano, and James Taylor. The movie just had everything it needed, characters drawn from the world of comedy realistically. Often comedians live in a dark place in their mind and their hearts as history has shown us with people like Richard Pryor and more recently Artie Lang. And this movie shows that side as well as the lighter side that they bring to their fans. Funny People is a fantastic new kind of film from Apatow with the same touches that he's always used. And it's, the slapstick humor is swirled in a little more lighter yet all the more effective. They say it's too, some critics say it's too long. I say no great film is too long and it's just that a great film Funny People gets the perfect five.